Today's establishing shot is brought to you by a channel subscriber. There's Alan. There's another view of Alan. Alan! Absolutely brilliant. That's made my day, that has. <laughs> Mostly to escape the gaze of your fellow viewers spotting me over the security fence, this episode's focus is beneath Alan, where we've not been a great number of times. Before getting to prepping the undersized gel coat for priming and coating, there are some bips and bobs sticking out that need sorting. The Kiel cooling pipes are a major project for later this autumn, but three remaining bilge drains will be simpler adversaries. So I'm hiding from the heat of the sun under here because these need to come off. They don't really form a function anymore and importantly they're going to be quite vulnerable underneath the hull so I'm going to be uh, removing these and trying to clean up the bottom of Allen. They started off as stainless steel cages with a ball trapped within. It allows water to drain out, but provides a pre-seal once the boat is on the water. Obviously there's a proper screw seal on the inside of the hull. My plan is to remove this unnecessary metal work and smooth the area off. There's no need to remove the whole metal housing as they're well bedded, but they will need sealing in. I then want to attach a streamlined custom dome to sit over the area and be glass seamlessly onto the hull. You might be wondering if I could create a protective structure around the keel cooling unit to protect it, like a sort of stainless steel cage so as not to interrupt cooling flow over the pipes. I'm not 100% decided, but I am likely to change it over for a less vulnerable stern-mounted seawater system. The reason for needing robustness at the heart of this mini-project isn't complex. Alan will encounter floating sea ice and needs to have as little as possible vulnerable to impact below the waterline. The angles of attack for the initial grinding were a little tricky, especially as I didn't want to damage the fiberglass. Using the flap wheel to smooth off the cut ends is more to avoid snags on clothes or tools, as the whole object will be encapsulated behind solid glass fibre. I also want to protect these old spigot mounts from getting caught on lines or fenders, so we can now move on to making a pattern for this domed cover, or a plug, or I guess you could call it a positive or male mould. Or you could call it Frederick I suppose, but that would be less helpful. So I took the corners off the 120mm square block so that I could work towards the circular shape. I've oversized the block in all dimensions, including thickness, so that the resulting fiberglass part can be cut back to various sizes. I'm baiting the 3D printing evangelist here, as with absolute certainty, a pattern with perfect uniformity could have been programmed and printed to create the sort of very shallow dome shape I'm after. However, I don't have a 3D printer, but I do have an offcut of wood, an orbital sander, and an angle grinder. I found the sander preferred the basic early shaping job, but then the disc kept on trying to escape the Velcro pad. It was the least suitable sander for the job, but I didn't have a belt sander or electric plane handy. The final shaping involved deployment of an old grinder flap wheel that I don't mind getting hot and a little bit clogged up. The majority of this work has been done by eye, but I marked the centre point and I measured the angles fairly roughly before deciding I was happy. Quick, imperfect, but effective. And now I have a shallow dome pattern. Now for the composites work. This is going to be a test piece, although if I'm happy with the end result shape and strength, then I'll probably use it. So now what I want to do is laminate some layers of really high quality glass fibre, which I've cut into strips, you can see there. Uh, this is woven and I'm going to be doing it at different angles to, uh, to improve the, uh, the strength. And that's going to sit on top of this wooden, I guess you, it's actually a pattern, but I guess you could also call it a positive mould. But anyway, that's got some release film on top of it. And then once that's uh, laid up, I'll then put another layer of release film on top to make sure that it cures properly. And then we'll see what we end up with in the end. My technique was to first of all lay on one covering of glass strips to completely cover the pattern sat under the release film, giving me the size needed. I'm varying the orientations of strips by 45 degrees so that there's uniform strength in all directions. Then I built up layer after layer of glass, ensuring it was all wetted out and trying to minimise air bubbles. I stippled out any little remaining pockets of air and excess resin with the brush. For a large part, or if using an opaque fibre like carbon or Kevlar that would render bubbles hard to see, then I would have used a fin roller. 
Next came the fiddly part, as the wet layers of glass could slip and slide if I wasn't careful. I needed to make sure that the glass conformed to the shape without ridging, and that's down to the strip widths, and also the fabric weave type. I was on the edge of acceptability, so we'll learn for the next few parts. Anyhow, it was a resounding success, and another layer of release film got placed on top. I want to make half a dozen parts, and this makes deciding on technique difficult. It's enough to make using my vacuum machine wasteful in terms of bagging materials, but not enough parts to justify making a dedicated two-part mould. Also, weight isn't a concern, so I don't need to squeeze out the last gram of excess resin. Instead, I use the suitably sized pot to fit over the release film and ensure the glass fits tightly around the edges, and in general hugs the pattern. Let's see how this test works out another time. Hold on to the end as I have some interim news of what we're going to call the slightly substandard sleeping platform I made. I'm going to be in Iceland making a special film for much of the rest of the month, but I'll try and squeeze out another Alan video if I can beforehand. Otherwise, go and watch my other videos, including the hour-long Arctic special, and you have no excuse not to read all my books before my return. Don't forget to review them on Amazon and Goodreads too. To the plank. Nothing wrong with the political name suggestions, but I thought we'd steer clear this time. Favourite two so far are Plank and HS2. Any other ideas? Bye.